Hey guys, Mr. Pokey here, back with another video, and today we're gonna be looking at CN's beginner guide for watering waves, covering every aspect of the game itself, game mechanics, how do you race, what should you be doing in the day one, uh, pooling banners, ecosystem, battle combat, all that kind of stuff. So without further ado, let's get into today's content. Subscribe. All right, starting off with the first and most important thing in watering waves is exactly team building this is going to be the most important aspect with regards to uh an uh, optimized player experience uh, for watering waves and generally speaking your main team composition is going to be with one main dps one sub dps and one healer one sustain but this sustain it doesn't really count as sustain it is more like a sustain slash support hybrid right so uh the reason why we say it's going to be going on to the outro skills and residents all that kind of stuff but generally speaking uh this is going to be the core of your main gameplay it's going to be a main dps sub dps support slash sustain hybrid as so of right now we only have two of these units which is basically baiju as well as varina the five star version right so very very limited as of this current moment generally for watering waves combat system you can think of it as like a, a mix of like genshin impact uh that the met sekiro pretty much uh you have hold attacks you have heavy attacks you have light attacks you have skills uh you have qte exchange intro outro ultimate uh, all the kind of stuff the exact game combat mechanics i'm not going to be going into it in depth because you guys can pretty much experience it yourselves and i do believe that experiencing this combat yourself is going to be the best way to fully understand how this system is a, uh, how this system is going to be about right there's no point of me trying to say how should you use your scale how should you a uh, hold how long should the rotation be you have to discard it yourself right so uh generally speaking the combat that is pretty much it all the different units have very very different very very unique style of combat uh even for the four stars there's also the echoes you can see or you can transform the giant ass echo uh but that is also dependent on your main echo uh that's only gonna be equipped for your main character right so uh generally speaking the gameplay the combat if you guys have played Sekiro if you guys have played Breath of the Wild if you guys have played Genshin uh, you're not gonna be too unfamiliar with the type of a combat you're gonna be seeing here right very very customizable very very different for all units right there's also uh, different types of echoes there's gonna be the damaging echo uh, which is dealing AoE damage dealing the mobs right there's also like, the control echo such as the time stop as well as the sustained echo that can regenerate health for you right? so different echoes will always have different units uh, uses just like how different units in this game will have different usage as well right? so between both echoes and characters there's a very high degree of customization with regards to watering waves hey you can become a goddamn motorcycle and ghost right a goddamn that's crazy chat you can also become a, a bird a dragon a plane oh my god you can literally fly in the goddamn game that's absolutely insane right so uh that is roughly how a uh, general combat system in running wave is going to work in watering waves uh like i mentioned just now the reason why you really want to have like a support ish character is because taking a look into your unit's outro skills in, or slash intro skills the buff for your dps units they tend to only cover the next unit so because watering waves you need three teammates your support is going to be the one that will have the least amount of field up time with your main dps being the one doing the most amount of damage right so the support is the only archetype that with their outro skill can buff up your entire team also this damage buff and damage amplification it is from a different damage multiplier so it's going to be very very good for our entire team's damage right so this is basically uh bites um, um skit and aside from bites most of the other units right so this you can see uh, Jian Xing, uh, Chi Xia, and Ling Yang, uh, all of their skills they only provide to the next unit so you can see buffing this into Chi Xia, only Chi Xia herself gains the buff and then we will swap to the next unit uh, only Ling Yang here gets the buff right so very very unfortunate but if we were to use Bai Chi slash Verena the only two supports we have in the game uh, this buff when you swap out it will buff the entire team a non-diminishing buff for our entire team for both our sub dps and our mini dps which is the main reason why for team building 
Baiju is pretty much a almost must build in the early game, especially if you're not going to be using your Fire Star Selector for Verena. But if you are, then we probably have to wait and see. But then again, it also ties out to the main end game content. You're probably going to be using multiple teams, which we're going to be discussing later on. So generally speaking, Baiju is really, really good for value uh, as one of the most important forces that you want to raise early on in the start of the game, right? So, yep. I want to talk a little bit about the parry system in Watering Waves because uh, parrying in Watering Waves as well as dodging, these two mechanics, they are absolutely integral to the overall gameplay you're going to be feeling in Watering Waves. You cannot, for the love of God, brute force and face tank content in this game because by the end game, especially especially for the holograms or even the memory of the version of the memory kiosk, you will quite literally get one shot, if not two shot, by most heavy attacks or even light attacks. So learning how to parry and learning how to dodge, it is not a suggestion, it is not a tip, it is a must. You can't brute force and just clear every single boss in like two seconds and like that's done, right? You actually have to parry and dodge. So it is very, very important that players can, can master this. Uh, between both parry and dodge, parry will have a more significance over dodging because parry does posture damage. Okay, okay, I, okay, I need to stop. Okay, chat, uh, uh, YouTube frogs, right? A little bit of brain rot. I've been playing Sekiro a little bit, so it's so just, you know, uh, you, you, do, you basically deal toughness bar damage when you parry, but you will not deal toughness bar damage when you dodge. So you can see that this dealt a little bit of toughness bar here because of the parry here. You can also parry with different, not just the parry button. You can parry with your skills, you can parry with your ultimate. There are a lot, a lot of different ways you can actually parry in this game as long as you hit the criteria of the timing, right? But do know that parry only works for this yellow circle and you can hear a thing and then you can kill the parry right? but uh, if you don't have this yellow circle then you pretty much have to dodge so a lot of different ways to parry and parry is going to be super super important and you can see over here you kind of have to judge the distance between each unit because different units have different parry windows so your different attack range right if you just have somebody that's using a pistol if somebody that's using a sword somebody's using a lance they all have different timings because the distance is different right so to fully master a unit you will need to experiment and play this game by yourself um, based on who you are using. So it is not very one-dimensional. Just because you master the parry for Ti Yan doesn't mean that the Ti Yan's time is going to be exactly the same for Chi Xia, right? So very, very different. But yep, once you master them, you can see that Tantus bar damage is going to be dealt over here, breaking the enemy's attack patterns. Just overall, very, very important to, to master Watering Waves parry, right? So uh, yeah, just to fully get the hang of this, play the game. You're not going to get this on day one, but just know that this is going to be super, super important in Watering Waves. So uh, do not forsake the parry system, right? Aside from the parry, you can also have a lot of different overworld exploration mechanics that can allow you to traverse in Watering Waves open world very, very effortlessly. As you can see just now, my man basically just did a jump into a hook shot into another jump to just look at that amount of distance. You can jump into a glide and then you can tr transform character mid-air and do a plunging attack. So the overall combat depth in Wuthering Waves is probably one of the most in-depth I have personally seen from any gacha games. I have not seen this amount of depth in a, in a gacha game for combat. It's a super, super, very, very in-depth You can use a lot of different tools. Uh, you can use jump, you can use parry, you can dodge, you can switch characters mid-air, change into this, jump down, break the posture bar, dodge this, boom, bam, bing, bam, boom, cut ultimate. So experience this yourself because theory you can only go so far, right? So now with that out of the way, let's jump into the next segment for the beginner's guide, which is going to be the weapon typings as well as the elemental typings in, in Watering Waves, right? So for weapon and elemental typings, there's basically six elements and five weapons, right? So just to summarize, it's going to be ice, fire, lightning, wind, light, and darkness. And then for the uh, different enemies, they will also have different resistances, as you guys can see from Hongkai Star Rail. Uh, some elements, they are resistant to ice, resistant to fire, so it will be in your best interest to match the right elements, right? And also, there are also mobs in this open world that are completely immune to damage. So for example, at this point, if we're using Sanhua over here, she's ice damage, but this little blob thingy, uh, whatever this is, it is completely immune to ice damage. So uh, it will be in the player's best interest to not raise units of the same element. You want to expand your elemental library so that you can be on element against more mobs, right? You don't want to raise like three ice or three fire at the start of the game. Right? You really want to just, just diversify your elements overall, right? So that's going to be that. Then for the weapon classes, there are only five weapon classes, one less from the element. So it's going to be a knife, blade, 
Brass Red, Pistol, and Sono Meter, right? Uh, Knife Blade and Brass Red, they are basically like your offensive close range weapons, close combat weapons. Pistol is gonna be like your long range, you can get goddamn American, just shoot stuff all over the place. And then your Sono Meter is pretty much like kind of like your support, uh, that you just bites, what bites is gonna be using, right? So, uh, Overall, uh, the unit can only use the weapon that they are assigned with, right? So you can only assign... Let's just play this again. Yeah, okay. Anyways, uh, so yeah, your three main weapons, uh, they can pretty much do a plunging attack. So the three main weapons, they can do a plunging attack. Your guns, your pistols, when you jump, you will slowly descend while you shoot mid-air. And then your sono meter, which is support, she will slowly jump upwards before she comes back down again. All right, so these are the three main differences between the weapon types, uh, aside from the damage up and down kind of stuff. Uh, you can do some very, very insane combos uh, depending on a unit's kit. So for example, uh, Kalkara over here, you can see that before he plunge, you can use a backflip into a hook, into a plunge. So my man can literally jump up 10 stories from his base kit again, right? So some characters, they do have the inherent built-in backflip to make them jump really, really high up for some really, really nuclear combos they can see in-game, right? Boom! So absolutely insane, right? So yeah, you can, you can just, yeah, some characters can do this, uh, but it really depends, right? So um, that is gonna be that. Uh, now with regards to the weapon systems as well as the unit development system, uh, you are mainly classified into two experiences, right? One for the unit experience and one for the weapon experience, right? Uh, this is nothing different from our Hongai Star and Genshin Impact, right? Uh, if you have been playing these games, it's exactly the same. They need experiences to level them up, so I'm not really gonna talk about this that much. Their limit break is very specific at 20, 40, 50, 60, 60, 70, and 80. So very, very similar to Genshin Impact. Max level is going to be level 90 uh, for both of our units and weapons, right? Uh, at the same time, if we do want to limit break them, we will need uh, a boss materials, right? So in, in, in Genshin Impact, it's going to be your bosses. In Hongai Star, it's going to be the your Ascended Shadows, uh, whatever. Well, I can't remember the name. But yeah, you basically need this. Uh, collect them from your overworld. You also need to pick a little bit of mints. You need to pick a little bit of stuff all over the place. So uh, very, very similar. If you're going to be a, like a Mihoyo Connoisseur, there's nothing new, right? So let's continue. On. Each character also has six idolins, so or six uh, dupes, so six impositions, uh, and your weapon is gonna be up to five as well. So nothing too different over here. Going into the start of the game, how exactly do we make use of this information to improve our new player experience uh, starting Warring Rage? So it is highly recommended to only focus on two to three units instead of raising different units because the amount of resources you need at the start of the game is going to scale up exponentially so from 20 to 40 it might be very cheap but from 50 to 60 70 to 80 80 to 90 it's going to be very 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 expensive so it is highly highly recommended uh, not including the fact that you know have a lot of overall materials and uh, and unit experience and weapon experience uh you do want to just focus on a core team instead of investing in a very diversified team right so for example it is it is highly not recommended to raise like four different teammates and they're all level 50 and try to go up against a level 70 boss you're gonna get absolutely destroyed unless you're built different so it is very very recommended to just focus fire on one main team as per usual like you have you, you have known from Genshin Impact Hongai Star it's nothing the same uh, but yeah just focus on one main team and that is gonna be that aside from this there are also tracers and character skills so how characters skills and tracers work in bordering base it is similar to okay I'm just gonna use Hongai Star as a reference because I don't really play with Genshin that much uh, you have basic attack, you have your resonance skills, you have your outro skill, you have your ultimate, uh, as well as your, your, your tank on cast. So there are five skills that you can level from one all the way to ten. And upon reaching level of uh, 50, you can unlock your minor traces. Uh, for the most part, your main skills, you only increase the multiplier. So nothing much really changes here. The only thing that changes when we're leveling up your skills is we're going to be your damage multiplier. So for example, if you're level 2, 128.5, all the way up to level 10 is going to be 236.1. So uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, number 2, this is going to be your minor traces. Just add on a little bit of stats, right? Maybe your HP, uh, effect rest, defense. Uh, it really depends on what the units are. So uh, different units will have different sort of minor traces, right? 
right? You can only unlock them at level 50. So upon level 50, then you can unlock all this uh, to go uh, even more in depth, right? So these are going to be your different resonances and then you can raise them up higher and higher and after a while you can unlock the second traces for your character, right? So that's going to be how character progression works in Wandering Waves. To unlock these traces, to improve these traces, you would need stamina materials. So materials that you can only get from spending your stamina. You will also need overworld materials, which are only materials you get from the overworld from farming uh, the, the mobs. And you will also need the normal weekly materials, right? So these weekly materials, this is gonna be like your normal stuff, your Echoes of War, you know, Echoes of War, you need Echoes of War. Okay? So uh, these are the three main sources of your, not inclusive of your gold, right? You, everybody needs gold in this economy, you definitely need gold. So yep, that's gonna be that. And then overworld farming. This is jumping into roughly the Echo System of Watering Waves. Uh, Echo System is pretty much Watering Waves' the biggest differentiator between Hongai Saru and Genshin Impact. I have made a Echoes guide in the previous section. If you guys want to see how Echoes work, you can check out this video over here. Uh, but just very, very briefly going through how Echoes work in this game once again, you have a cost system. Right now, you start with 8 costs, but eventually you're going to get to 12 costs. 12 costs is going to be the end game, which means you, most of the time, you're going to be pairing up with a one cost, three cost, and four cost units. Uh, the ideal setup right now is going to be four, three, three, one, one for a total of 12 costs. So no wastage whatsoever. Uh, alternatively, you could also run four, four, one, 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 right? You don't use a three cost, you change that into a four cost, but you get uh, one additional one cost, right? So uh, this stuff, I don't think I'm going to be talking about it that much, right? Once you, as usual, check out my Echo's Guide roughly in here. Echo upgrades. In Watering Waves, your Echoes have a fixed main stat one and a random main stat two. So your three cores over here, you're gonna have all this, your one core is gonna be all this, and your four cores is gonna be all this. So these are RNG, right? Main stat, nothing too crazy, you just kinda have to kinda grind it out. The important thing is the Echoes upgrade. So for your gold Echo, it goes up to level 25. Your purple echo goes up to level 20 and your blue echo goes up to level 15. Um, now, for each additional upgrade, you will unlock a random substat. The difference of Warring Waves and Genshin Impact and Hongai Saru is that upon unlocking a specific substat, that substat, it is done. You are not going to be able to roll into the substat again, so you can't roll like two lines of crit or like three lines of crit. So that slot is permanent, it's fixed. So you just want to get all of the different substats unlocked. Uh, so a ideal made substat distribution for your DPS is going to look something like this. A crit rate, crit damage, flat attack, attack percentage, as well as their uh, respective elemental damage, right? So this is going to be the god role. It is not all in the crit rate, all in crit damage. You want to have all these roles unlocked because the moment you unlock them, you can't roll them anymore. So this is going to be an example for your god role. But even within this god role, there are some instances of RNG, which is the row themselves has a very, very slight difference with regards to the um, substat quality. So a flat attack for one gear could be flat attack 30, but a flat attack for another gear could be flat, uh, flat attack 40. Uh, generally speaking, as long as you get the right substats, you don't really have to care that much or feel that bad that you didn't get a good roll on like your attack or crit damage because you can't really fix them you can't change them anyways so the moment you get a complete subset with the right rolls it's good enough right so a little bit of RNG here and there so if you really really want the perfect god tier highest rolls for every single subset it is gonna be a lot, a lot of RNG, right? So uh, do take that into consideration. So with that explained, how exactly do we obtain Echoes or the farming process, especially with the update from our latest live stream? Because they did mention that they streamlined the Echo farming process in Watering Waves. So we can see over here, by farming the overall mobs, you are gonna be able to get your Echoes, but these are mainly one cost Echoes, right? You can only get one cost from farming overall mobs. But the thing is, even though theoretically you could farm an infinite number of Echoes in the overworld, you are going to be limited by this relic or rather echo experience. So you can farm them, but you can't raise them because this is going to be gated by your stamina. So you, you can't get this from the overall. Uh, that being said, does that mean that it is completely useless? Uh, not really, because if you were to see over here, okay, first of all, they already said they're going to be improving the overall process. So we're going to have to see what this process is upon the game's actual release. But they have also introduced a system where you could farm for your random 
like unwanted echoes, you can use the disenchant fun function to change them into one cause and three cause random echoes. So it is very similar to Honkai Star Rails, right? Your, your relic fragments, you throw them away, then you get a new fragment. So something like this, this is completely RNG. Uh, one last tip before we move on from the echo portion, which is it is ideal for players to not raise their echoes in the early game. Uh, you ideally want to just save your uh, echo experience because this is a very, very limited resource. Uh, use your units levels and weapon levels to power through the early game don't level your echoes in the early game because it's not worth it especially when you have dog shit relic quality right uh towards the late game uh it is also not recommended to raise them all the way to level 25 unless you have a perfect role so for the most situation leaving them to level 20 is going to be good enough because the experience needed from 20 to 25 is going to be very very high still with how hongai story you leave your relics at level 12 in the early game only bring them to plus 15 if you're absolutely sure that they're going to be the right ready for you they're going to be for a long time right so that is pretty much it for the echo process okay that union level so union level in watering waves is gonna be pretty much uh the first thing you're gonna be grinding out in the first week of watering waves the union level is absolutely the most important thing with regards to your account progression so uh for the grinders for the main pickers or players that are going to be going hardcore in this game it would be in your best interest to raise your union level as fast as humanly possible and how exactly do we raise this union level it is true you know collecting the overall right farming the overall uh just dealing more mobs so you can also get them uh the more you farm the more experience you're gonna raise and then eventually you're gonna level them up so why do we want to bring this up as fast as humanly possible it is because at a certain rank you can unlock a lot a lot of good things right so for example you're gonna increase the odds of your echoes dropping you're gonna increase the quality of your drop so for example uh, at first you can only get like purple echoes and eventually you're gonna get gold echoes right uh and all that kind of stuff as well as increasing your cost limit because like, at the start of the game you can only have eight costs eventually later on you need to get 12 costs as well as your stamina bar so this is gonna be related to your genshin impacts like your genshin impact uh the amount of stamina you will consume while running uh this higher level of your union is going to lead to you running longer flying longer and just overall have a much better time exploring overall so it would be in your best interest to raise this up as fast as humanly possible right so at the start you can see you can only gain green relics and your cost is only eight at level one so very not very good whatsoever but eventually when you level up you can get blue at level five or uh, eight at level a uh, purple at level eight as well as a gold Oh, you get the level, you get 12 cores at level 9. You get 12 cores at level 9. So that's where you fully max out your echo cores. And then you finally unlock 5 star golden echoes at level 15. So it would be in a player's best interest to get to this as fast as possible. Then you might be wondering, what is this thingy on the top bar, right? The, the base chance as well as the uh, enhanced chance thingy, right? So these are the percentages. Uh, these things, they are only applicable to your boss fights your five cause echoes right um and after doing this five times all right after five times uh you can only refresh this next week so this refreshes only five times once per week right and it's only for your four cost echoes so for you are farming your one cost echoes and your three cost echoes uh this percentage chance it doesn't matter that much to you all right so uh still nonetheless you do want to raise this up as much as possible and eventually when you hit level 20 uh this is going to be really really good right you're going to get uh, aside from all the rewards uh 20 percent increased base chance as well as 100 percent increase in absolute cost so uh yeah just overall raises 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 super super important not affected for your one cost and three cost just, just only for your boss echoes after hearing the explanation for union level, this is where the difference between the casuals and the non-casuals will kick in. Because union level, you pretty much only raise this, uh, or rather the, the most common way to raise this is through killing overall mobs and collecting their relics, uh, collecting their archives, right? So if you play this watering waves a lot, you're gonna progress your union level a lot faster. And the faster you progress your union level, uh, the more bang for buck you're gonna get back, uh, especially when you're farming the four cost mobs, uh, the four cost echoes to raise your characters overall, right? So if you are slow in this regard, uh, generally speaking, you are not gonna be as efficient when it comes to farming as compared to a player that has been playing this game uh, non-stop all the way uh, just to get to as high of a union level as much as possible. So this is the main difference uh, for the casuals and the non-casuals. 
all right then there's gonna be uh you can also get some rewards there's gonna be uh, events there's gonna be all the kind of stuff so not much to say about his over here that is basically the overall watering waves uh very bare bones system of what you could expect as a game itself so this is gonna be what you should be doing day one of watering waves so the first thing you do when you go in uh, if you have been playing Honga Story and Genshin Impact, it is nothing new. You basically want to progress through the main story as much as humanly possible because the main story is what unlocks uh, not only do you have the most amount of experience to raise your, your overall level for your, of your rover, you also unlock new maps as well as the overall uh, monsters levels and all kinds of stuff just to make your overall farming a lot better because uh, like I mentioned, overall farming in, in watering waves is going to be very important for your units and for your echoes. So the more you progress through the main story, the more zones, the more maps the more types of enemies you're gonna unlock which just overall gonna make your experience playing water race a lot better right uh there's no rush to this right there's no rush but generally speaking even if you are casual focusing on main story should be your utmost priority right and then you can go ahead and just fly over the place explore the world and all that kind of stuff so not too much to be said over here after completing your main story quest, there are also companion quests, so your side quests as well as some uh, random ass quests. So these quests should be your second priority because you only do them when you are uh, hitting like a cap, like a level cap. Before you can progress the main story, you're gonna hit a cap. Then you can do this uh, to just make your progress even further but only when you can't progress the main story. Right? So aside from the side quest and main quest, then these are the end game content for Watering Waves, right? So aside from the quest, these are the end game content. You're definitely not going to be doing them in day one, uh, but these are some things that you're going to be expecting uh, going forward. So the first of all being their version of Simulated Universe, right? So exactly the same as what you would say expect from Hongai Star Wars. You have different buffs, you will fight different mobs. At the start, especially at the start of the game, when your characters are very, very weak, you might face a lot of problems you can see that they're doing absolutely zero damage whatsoever but as you progress further and further through the this version of simple universe you're gonna get different buffs different echo buffs different unit buffs different uh weapon buffs all that kind of stuff and it will just make clearing a lot faster as you get more and more buffs so exactly the same as simple universe uh, one thing that is different from simulated universe in Hongkai is that in warring ways you can gain specific unit buffs so for example in Paich over here you can see that she can gain special abilities so in in this case, it's gonna be uh, you gain um, 10 stacks of this, and when you hit 10 stacks uh, for the next three seconds, you'll, you should do like enhanced attack, right? Or another buff over here, you can see this is gonna be upon using her ultimate, Baiji is gonna recover 50% of the HP and gain five seconds of this additional buff, and every single second you recover. So different units have different specific unit buffs, which is the key difference between this and, and Hongai Star, right? So uh, it will make overall playing experience, even with like underutilized units, a lot better. So you can literally quite literally use a DPS bite as you can see over here to do nuclear amounts of damage and this is going to be possible uh, in, in, in this domain right so a uh, few free to explore you can there's all this kind of stuff turn into egos a uh, very very dynamic gameplay with regards to this content wandering waves right the other end game content is gonna be uh, their version of uh, I believe it's called the Echo Tower this literally translates into Tower of Echoes or Echo Tower so this is pretty much Spiral Abyss slash Memory of Chaos, right? So there's two different zones. Uh, the first zone is basically a single clear event. The moment you clear it, you claim everything, it doesn't refresh. The second zone is going to be their real end game content. Uh, this second zone, it will refresh every single week. It refresh every single week and there are three different, uh, I guess, towers that you can attempt and each towers have different uh, waves, right? So this is going to be tower one, then there's going to be four waves in tower one. So how exactly does this work is that your units will have a stamina system. So you can see over here, Ling Yan is gonna have 10 stamina, your your, your Kalkoro is gonna have 4 stamina. Every single time you do a singular wave, it will consume stamina. So this is, for your first wave is 1 stamina, 2 stamina, 3 stamina, and 4 stamina for a combined total of 10 stamina. Just nice for a single team to clear all 4 flaws. So that is gonna be tower one, right? Uh, shouldn't have too much of an issue, and then you're gonna have to just spend this up, clear everything, boom, done. Uh, but the moment they're out of stamina, you can't use them again. 
All right, one, two, three, four for one, two, three, four stamina. Very, very normal. The moment you're out of stamina, I can't use them again. And this brings us to the team building aspect, which is if you get into the second tower, this is going to be different from the first tower in the sense where there's only two waves and they are instantly fighting the boss. The first tower, you're fighting against mobs. Second tower, you're fighting against boss. And generally speaking, tower two is going to be having a much higher difficulty compared to tower one. And they both cost five stamina each. If you were to consume your staminas for the first tower, they can no longer participate in the second tower, which means you probably want to use your weaker units on the first tower and then use your stronger units for the second tower. And then there's also another tower towards the end, but, but that's basically it. So uh, very, very interesting when it comes to team building. You definitely do not need to think about this uh, at the earlier start because that means it will require you to build three different teams because there are three towers you can see over here, right? there are three towers so uh it is definitely not your goal right now you should definitely still focus on a singular bat and slot team just to clear through main story as much as possible exactly how you wouldn't want to try be trying out spiral abyss or memory of chaos at a, at a day one or week, even week one right so only think about this in the future but do be prepared to build a lot a lot of different units to match up the different ending content and as well as the fact that each different towers they also have their different respective buffs you can see over here different towers different waves they're all have different buffs so do try to match up the element as well as the um best units to take the best advantage of set buffs right? and these buffs they will refresh every single week so that's gonna be that and then these are gonna be the rewards are gonna be getting right the high is gonna be 30 out of 30 so exactly the same as the memory of chaos every single clear this will refresh every single week right so you can scroll down all the way down pretty much the same 750 airstrikes per week so really, really good then this is gonna be uh the one-time clear event so that's gonna be that then you can literally exchange this you know this is going to be the currency you're going to be getting from the endgame content you can exchange for a monkey you can exchange for shards and all kind of stuff this one best in slot don't really think at all about it yet but just know that this is your current standard memory of kill stuff another endgame content that watering waves will have is going to be the legendary signature holograms holograms in this game uh, they are basically your direct boss fights separate from the the tower content right you only fight the boss and they are extremely extremely difficult when you get to higher levels you can quite literally i'm not sure if you guys caught that over there towards the later levels even when your character has quite literally 10,000 hp you can see 10,000 hp a single hit is half your health bar you not parrying this means it's game over so this is probably gonna be the much more intense content as compared to tower because tower you're not really limited to your skills that much because you're limited by your units right this is gonna be just you against the boss three units against one it is all skills no two ways about it you just have to get good this is pretty much you have to get good right uh you really really need to learn the uh, attack timings their pacing when is their weak points when is their opening for you to go in uh how do you use your rotations uh different team cons for different units all the kind of stuff uh this is gonna be a uh, very very fun. Uh, me personally this is gonna be my favorite content right i've been playing Sekiro for the past i think one week uh i i, I i'm looking forward to this right so uh there are currently four holograms as of cbd3 i'm quite sure we're going to be getting more boss in the future split between level one all the way to level six now one important thing to note for this level one and level six is that not only do they have increased health and increased attack their attack patterns also change it is not a simple math number change right it is not a simple health sponge it is comparable to if you're playing Monster Hunter, you're fighting a normal Rattalos into an Azure Rattalos into a Silver Rattalos. So their attack patterns will get more and more aggressive, more and more punishing, the higher difficulty you go into their holograms. So a uh, very, very good challenge, very, very good content for players who really, really want to sweat it out and test uh, pretty much one of the hardest content that Warring Waves has to offer. And you can also do some interesting self-imposed challenges like, you know, one man clear, no hit clear, no relics whatsoever. So feel free to go ham. I'll be looking forward to this when we get that, right? So that's going to be the horror game.
All right, so these are going to be your stamina domains. So where do we use stamina for watering Rage, right? Uh, first domain, this is going to be the training grounds. You're going to be able to get your uh, unit experience as well as your weapon experience, as well as your echoes experience, as well as your normal gold over here. So this is going to be uh, comparable to your golden caddies in, in Hongkai Star Road, right? Red is your tracers, gold are your normal materials. So this is going to be what you're going to be expecting. Not too crazy here. And then this is going to be your calyx rate, right? Your rate calyx in Hongkai Star Road. These are your skill tracers for you to upgrade your character skill as well as your, your weapon skills, your ascension materials, all the kind of stuff, right? So that's going to be there. And then your unit ascension, like your limit break ascension, is going to be from overall bosses. So pretty much the same as your stagnant shadows in Hongkai Star, right? So that's going to be your farming. Keep in mind, if you defeat overall bosses, you can get echoes from them, right? Remember, these are three cost echoes. You can get echoes from them and they consume no stamina. You can collect them for free, but if you want to get the ascension material, then you would need to consume a stamina, right? So if you are a heavy, heavy main picker, you can spam boss fights and collect your three cost uh, echoes uh, completely for free without spending stamina. So something to keep in mind. And then this is gonna be your weekly. This is pretty much your echoes of war, right? Your weekly echoes of war, level 40, level 90. Uh, get your echoes of war materials, all that kind of stuff. Uh, not too crazy over there. 60 stamina. That's pretty much it. They did mention that um then this is gonna be your echo zone. This is gonna be the place where if you're casual, you do not want to farm overall, you do what you, you want to still get echoes, you'll pretty much go here. And you will still go here even if you are a hardcore player, because you still need to get limit break materials for your echoes, right? Uh you do need to get these materials to level them up. Otherwise, you, you can't do, do anything about it. Uh they did say in the live stream that they have improved the drop rate for this zone because previously these drop rates were completely dog shit. So Players were not too happy spending their stamina here. It was not worth it. But they did say that uh, they are going to be improving this. So I'll be looking forward to see exactly what can we get upon the actual release of Watering Waves. All right. Yeah, that is pretty much it for 90% of our content. And now our final portion is going to be the whales, right? The shop guide. What exactly do we buy with our with our doubloons, if I can say so myself, right? So this is gonna be the slightly less relatable section. So let's take a look at Watering Waves currency, all right? So exactly the same as Honga Story and Genshin Impact. This is pretty much 99 US dollars. You get the double top up on the first time, and after the double top up, you're gonna be able to get the normal rates, right? So exact same price as Watering Waves and uh, exact same price as Honga Story. Uh, premium currency is gonna be this little sphere over here, uh, which is basically your ordinary shards, uh, and then you can convert them into your asteroids or rather your uh, stellar jades right so not too crazy exactly the same one-to-one -one conversion uh in and then this is gonna gonna be the banners right your banners in the first week your banner you are gonna be getting these banners you're gonna be getting a 50 pools beginner banner at 20 percent discount you're also gonna be getting a standard banner and then you're gonna stand weapon banner as well as a limited banner and a limited weapon banner so you're gonna be seeing five different banners on the first day of watering waves so one important thing to note is that the currency you use for your standard summons it is shared between both the unit and the weapon whereas for your limited summons it is not shared this limited rate up summons you can use them for only your units and then there's a separate currency for your limited weapon so there's the key difference all right, so you can see there's a different currency marked by this weapon over here. It is a different currency. First thing, obviously, we are going to be doing the beginner's pools. Get a random 5-star, call your day, 20% discount. Everyone should be doing this, all right? And at the start of the game, you're beginning a lot, a lot of summons because, you know, as you guys have seen from the live stream, uh, the developers have given us a lot, a lot of summons, right? So just, you have no problems whatsoever getting a 5-star the moment you play the game, right? Not even day one. You can probably get this in the first hour or even the first 10 minutes. So don't be worried out there but that being said we have also come into a brand new news which is gonna be the five star selector after 80 pools so this is gonna be really really good um most of the time you should be choosing Verena. she's gonna be our best in slot uh, support slash sustain like i mentioned there's only two support slash sustain in bottom rooms now there's only Verena and there's only Baichi, right between these two Verena is the better option so if you guys are gonna be mana players she's gonna be the main pick if you guys want a dps unit then you are gonna be picking kakarot right kakarot is gonna be the strongest standard five star dps and the rest of the dps is really uh not that great compared to the rest right so yeah this is just the part where content creator is like years of gacha 
player anguish. He didn't target any game. It's like years of players' feedback, years of anguish. And finally, we have gotten a game that has given us a standard selector after 80 pulls. And we can finally say bye-bye to the nightmares of, of not getting a 5-star. Bye-bye. All right. So just a little bit of an interesting segment over there. Uh, now, going into the next portion, which is going to be... Okay, this is... I'm just going to gloss through because it's exactly the same as Honkai Star Road, right? You have your rate up. Every 80 summon is going to be your guaranteed 5 star. So it's different from the 90 guaranteed. It's 80 guaranteed. Every 10 boots, you're going to get a 4 star weapon or the unit, right? So not too much to be uh, different over here. So we don't really need to talk about it. Your weapon banner in Watering Waves, like I've mentioned, you will never, ever miss. You are always going to be able to get your weapon. So for example, the standard weapon, you can use a selector. So for example, if you want the sword, you can click the sword. After 80 pulls, you are guaranteed the sword. And this is refreshable, which means if you want an S5 sword, or if you want an S1 of every single copy, you can choose exactly what weapon you want uh, for Watering Waste, right? So this is going to be for the standard weapons. So very, very nice. Uh, it's refreshable. So you can see uh, every single unit, eventually if you play the game long enough, they're all going to get their signature weapons. No problems whatsoever, right? So uh, that is going to be good. Then for your five star, this is going to be our first banner, Ti Yan, featuring our three red heads, right? Uh, I do want to say uh, Tan Jing, she is pretty much the strongest pick over here. She has dashed and that absolutely insane amount of damage but that being said you do need to learn how to parry but Tanji is going to be a really really good unit so this is going to be our first banner uh, with Tien limited banner like I mentioned you do not you do not okay I'm just going to let the CM bro talk about it you guys probably can't understand but you can feel his passion right you can feel his passion from this so I'm just going to let him say it <laughs> 但这个池子它不仅是单阿补而且出货率不是百分之八十不是百分之九十九而是失去无限可能的 I'm not sure if you guys could understand uh, the, the, what he was saying but basically from the passion he was super super happy that the limited weapon in this game is 100% you will never fail a 50-50 uh, in watering waste right so he is super super happy about this uh, and the fact that this makes our E0 S1 cost infinitely more valuable in watering waste in fact if you are gonna be someone that don't even like the five star unit but you like your four star you can quite literally pull the sim signature weapon banner for your four stars and in water ways there are some four stars in specific setups that can outperform five stars so this is a brand new dynamic that players probably have not considered before which is there may be scenarios where pulling for a signature weapon it is more worthy more value than pulling for a limited five star unit for the first time ever there's gonna be this situation where people pull for the weapon before the unit because you can never lose a weapon and you can give this weapon to your four star units and from what we've seen water ways there are four star units that can outperform five stars right so uh, yeah, you can consider putting a 5-star weapon for your 4-star Abobas. So, uh, players, uh, keep that into consideration when you play the game more and more. Uh, look forward to more and more signature weapons, right? Do keep in mind, I know most of the time you guys have PTSD from putting weapons, so you guys probably don't even look at what the weapon does. In modern ways, that is not the case. The weapons have incredibly, incredibly good value that you can give to a lot of your different teammates as long as they are the same weapon type, right? So, if you love your 4-stars, you can pull a 5-star weapon for your 4-star. Okay, the dupe system in Watering Waves. The dupe system in Watering Waves, uh, this is going to be tied up a little bit to our shop over here. Uh, first of all, if you lose a 50-50, you will gain an additional 30 corals. So what exactly are the corals? These are similar to Hongai Staro's Undying Starlight. All right? uh, you're going to be able to get a 8 corals, I believe from a 4 star and the 15 blue corals from a 3 star, all right? So this is gonna be exchanging from a shop. So that's why if you were to fail a 50-50, you get an additional 30 coral just to console your little bit. Oh no, you lost a 50-50, here's 30 corals for you. Uh, so, so that's good, right? So now, important thing, what is this coral gonna be used for? Almost 100% of the time, the only reason for you to spend your coral, your rainbow coral is going to be dupes dupes for your for your units specifically limited unit dupes so 
It costs 360 rainbow corals for a limited unit, 270 unit for a uh, 270 corals for a standard unit, as well as 55 for a four star. Right? You are never, ever, ever, ever going to exchange this uh, for for these summons over here because it is not worth it. Getting a dude. This is basically guaranteed win on a summon on a limited banner. This is a guaranteed win over here. So it is never ever worth it to exchange for this. Please do not change for this. It is never, do not spend your rainbow cores on this. Uh, the only thing you should be spending on should be 360 for a free idolon of a limited banner unit. This is extremely, extremely important. Do not waste this. Uh, it is beyond brickening if you waste this around. So it's just, just don't waste this, right? Save this for your limited banner. All right, if you really, really want a standard banner, you could, but uh, the only one that's worth is Verena. Uh, but overall, it's not really that recommended, right? Uh, you can only exchange for two. So you can only get up to two copies of both the limited and the standard afterwards. Otherwise, it's just gone, right? So one thing you should consider is that the limited idolon it only appears during that unit's banner which means that theoretically you can't just save like 10,000 rainbow corals uh, and then instantly get a two pulls uh, for for your uh, Ji Yan right if Ji Yan's banner is not up Ji Yan's idolons will not be up you will have to wait for his rerun or you can only spend it on the current rate up banner so you can't really save this for that long but the currency itself it stays in your account forever it's just that the idol changes right you can just hold your currency wait for 720 corals right so save up for 720 corals save it up free e2 invisible donate for everyone and amount right so this is a really really good system so this means that even for free to place for new players uh low spenders you can also get a e2 limited unit after playing sometime and then for the whales you only need to pull for five copies you just need to pull for five copies and then you can get a e6 eventually so this system is really really good it saves a lot of players a lot a lot of time so yeah overall just just, just a great system right cool last segment of today which is gonna be the normal blue cross so this is your normal uh i believe it's called embers shop in hongai star Rail, right you can exchange for pools exchange for limit uh materials for your characters uh one thing to note for watering waves is that you can exchange 18 pools a month instead of the usual 10. you get six limited unit summons six limited weapon summons and six standard banner summons so every single month you can get 18 pools instead of the usual 10. so that's gonna be really, really good right absolutely your highest priority is to get them all and as we know by now the weapon summons in this game they are not to be underestimated right the web signature weapon in this game is super super valuable so you definitely want to exchange for everything here uh when you have a chance right so that's gonna be that and then if you are a whale, you can consider pulling for the uh, unit upgrade materials because at the start of the game, you are going to be running out very, very quickly. So if you're a whale, you have a lot of these friends lying around, uh, feel free to get these upgrades and just upgrade your team a little bit more. And yeah, just have a head start ahead of everyone else. Uh, then you have some battle passes over here, monthly card, battle pass, all the kind of stuff. No, nothing too crazy, exactly the same as Star Rail, so that's going to be that. Monthly pass, exactly the same, 90 Stellar Jakes a day, 90 Ash Rides a day, and then there's also going to be the battle pass, uh, all this. I think this kind of stuff is not too crazy, so I'll just wait till the game re uh, is released and save it as that, right? So with that, we've come to the end of today's content. If you want to engage in any further discussions, head on over to our Discord, discord.g, for this Pokies video, we're very active community for on a daily basis, and one reason on a daily basis, I'm going to change the okay? I'm going to change every day, this coming day, 21 on my Sabaton, app three insane absolutely nuclear i'll be looking forward to the water waves release uh, as of the time this recording water waves should be out in less than 17 hours absolutely crazy i will see you guys there that's all i have today all the best for your tm pools and i'll be seeing you guys next time take care